call a meeting to order. Um, um, entertain a motion to approve the minutes of July 12th, 2022 select board meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion about that? Anything that's on those minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I vote. All right, additions and deletions. Uh, one, there's correspondence from DB Fire, Fiber, um, of an audit report. There is a, uh, under two, it's posted to the Chair's report for Southern Vermont Economic Project. Um, under number three, Old Business, Stone Arch Bridge, request from the Historical Society. New Business, Oil and Propane Contract. Five is an executive session for personnel, and six is a, is a, to discuss the um, and potentially sign the electronic sign request from the planning commission. Okay, so let's see. No, no members of the public. Most of the, most of this stuff is in here for just your review, like the DB Fiber thing. Was that the one we had to sign, Tom? Yeah. Okay. okay. That's just for your review. There were, they did an audit um, on it, and they're just explaining it. The other thing is a uh, the Southern Vermont Economic Project has a Knowledge Bites project, I guess you would call it. Um, and there's federal funds to fit into this rural economic development initiative. This is all the same thing. I think that's all the new uh, correspondence. Uh, warrant, go ahead, Rob. Make much to pay the warrants. Starting with payroll, the amount of $9,781.90. Number two, payroll tax, the amount of $4,252.69. Number three, the general fund, in the amount of $4,234.50. Number four, highway fund, the amount of $4,178.50. Number five, highway equipment fund, in the amount of $1,619.63. And number, number six, ARPA. In the amount of $170 for a total of $24,237.22. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Is there any discussion about any of the warrants? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Five all. Next one we have is the treasurer's report. Since we start, the figures that you can that you see on the bottom, the true general fund, this is what we got to work with. The other things are, uh, as I've ex explained each time, uh, what we have saved out of reserve for projects uh, for the year, and the ge true general fund amount is one hundred ninety-three thousand four hundred and thirty dollars. The bank records. A number of seven hundred and forty-six, I guess forty-six thousand two hundred forty-nine dollars and ninety-five cents in the investment fund, and the checking account is thirty thousand dollars. Town clerk's report: um, she has taken in uh, one thousand three hundred and twenty-five dollars in fees for services. Next thing is okay. On when is this Connie? Tuesday, uh, August second. Yeah, at eleven o'clock. Yeah. There will be a representative from VLTC here to give a, a presentation about model policies and templates for policies. Um, anybody that wants to come, I'll be there. Connie will be there, and if you want to come, you're welcome too. This is something that they they're doing to try and modernize 
uniformly across the state. Okay. All right, go ahead, Steve. Our new hire, Anthony, started a week ago yesterday. Uh, Wyndham Hill paving is completed. The J Road box culvert is completed. County, when I wasn't sure if they were going to make it on the warrants tonight or not, but there's 200000 plus in grant money that's going to come back to us. So I'll need a copy of each bill, Mason Brothers for paving, Renault Brothers for the box culvert. Um, this is premature, but as well as a copy of the check. So it will have to be at the next meeting, after the next meeting. So we can, I can get that paperwork submitted and we can get that money back as soon as possible. Do we need to extend that uh, or extend the uh, line of credit? Considering what are active? Yes. We do. Okay. Yeah, would you follow up with Elaine to, uh, we have a, or we did have, it might have expired, a line of credit um, for $300,000 for when we hit shortfalls like this. We didn't use it last year, but not really shortfalls, but potential shortfalls. Okay. We also received our FEMA reimbursement payment. Uh, 244700 uh, We're just waiting on a Category Z, which is the last one. That's somewhere around 11 or 12000 And I would like to thank Connie for all her help from all these meetings and all these <laughs> inputting data, which she was linked into the portal. I was not. Uh, but we worked together on all that and uh, went, to get, went very, very smoothly. We didn't have any issues. Excellent. I understand that there are other communities that didn't go so smooth for, but they kind of weren't prepared for it, and we were. So that's good. good thing. Anything else? So Steve, tell us all that. Okay. All right. Kind of went at that kind of backwards, but all right. There's a th there's something in your packets from um, a meeting that Connie and Charlie had over the. Historical Society and Bridge 34, the Stone Arch Bridge. Um, I am reluctant to bring this to a vote tonight simply because there is a huge gap in money. Um, right now, according to this form, the project's at $750,000. What, uh, what has been raised is approximately four hundred and forty two thousand dollars so without an idea where that extra money is coming from and this this one right here the last time we asked for a, a meeting with a representative from the stonemasons guild it went up to eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars so i think there before we sign on to this as far as they want an easement and they want a um, ownership consent, I guess. We need to find out where that other $250,000 or more is coming from. Uh, is there anybody have anything to add? Are we fine with that? Okay. Did anybody ever meet with the same as Mike? Too busy. No, too busy. Too busy. We, Did we, we ever get a breakdown of why it went from we tried the first point to the second point, and we got a total of eight hundred fifty thousand dollars. But that did we, we ever get an explanation? I mean, no. I know that they had a, a wild breakdown, but no. Um, and that breakdown didn't cover cribbing and didn't cover support for the arch while they took the thing apart, which I would think would be a pretty big ticket item. Um, so anyway, the last time we talked, we tried to get this guy in. To talk to us, he gave us a quote of eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which was a hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollars more than what it was the previous time, and then the time before that, when it was what fifty, five hundred thousand dollars, five hundred thousand dollars, and then it keeps going up. I mean, we're going into the fourth year of this. So. Yeah. I mean, there is a, there is an alternative, and uh, the alternative is is we put in a box culvert type bridge there and set the set girders set girders up like one there was a suggestion that we set girders across there and run the traffic over the girders and the bridge 
at least the arch of the bridge won't take any further damage. But according to what I understand, the bridge hasn't failed inspection and there's just cosmetic work that needs to be done. Does that, does that sum it up pretty yes. much? I was on site with the state inspector. Um, the speed limit restriction and weight restriction did not come from the state. It came from Michael Weisner. Okay. And I pulled the I pulled the entire packet from the state, so I have all the photos um, from their last inspection, and didn't really show the deficiencies that are um, present. But the the this bridge services like eight houses, and we're going to spend a hundred thousand dollars a house. I mean, that's not cost effective. So. We got to find something that is more that's not going to cost us a fortune to do at this point. So it's there. Read it. Um, we'll bring it up again probably next meeting. Why don't you put that on for next meeting, and then we can have at least a discussion about it. Okay. Okay. Sound like a plan? Oh yeah. Okay. All right. What's next? The town, the town auditors are requesting that we, I don't think I had any other old business, no. Town auditors are requesting a signature on the, to sign off that they did their due diligence and, and did the audit of the of accounts here. Um, this is standard, it's in your packet. Um, comes up every year and what they're asking for is uh, us to approve it. I don't think there's any real changes from the one last year other than the dates. Um, I'll, give, I'll give the option I gave the last time we had something like this. Do you want an opportunity to read through it and we'll sign it at the next meeting or do you want to move forward? Let's read it and sign it. Next. Okay. All right. Let's put that as uh, tables. And we'll move that over. All right. New business. In the packets, there's a pa there's information on propane and fuel oil. And one of the things we did at the budget meeting, uh, or at the budget meetings, was made a decision to. Um, Consolidate and try and get a better figure than six different op six different uh, options. Um, so what I asked Connie to do was uh, look at sending out to different people or different companies to get us pricing, and pricing is all over the map. So what I'm going to do is ask Connie to just go over because she put together this summary. The rest of it's just material to look over if you want to, but I'm going to ask her to start this part off. Okay. Um, so I wanted to start off by saying the last two pages of all of this um, documents are the current rates from Osterman for the propane and uh, Nito for the oil. So um, started making phone calls back in May about getting a price program from uh, oil and propane companies. Nobody, because it was so volatile at the time, none of the companies were willing to give a price program. Um, it wasn't until uh, late June or early July that they began to um, give some numbers. So um, I think it's kind of self-explanatory, but Coda and Coda came in with their price cap program um, which is spelled out here. Uh, the only thing I would note that is if the price goes below what they're quoting, we get the lower price. But they do have a, um, a fee that's non-refundable that we have to pay, the price protection fee. Um, Deep River came in with, uh, I think, significantly lower costs, but we have not gotten a contract, any verbiage or anything like that, but they are quoting those rates. Have not gotten a response from Suburban, and 
uh, Nito and Osterman are giving individual quotes. So Nito is giving only a number to oil quote, no propane because they were supposed to contact Steve to look at the tanks. I don't know if they ever did. They're coming Tuesday. Okay. Um, and then Osterman does not do oil, but we sure would still wanted to get a price from them for the propane, and that's what we got today. So the supporting document is attached to the back. Can you get me the Deep River propane pricing for my house? <laughs> yeah, I know, huh? The, um, there's a catch with, what is it, Coda and Coda? That has to be, we have to decide tonight. Two of these, Coda and Coda and Deep River, uh, this is only good until 3 o'clock tomorrow. The quote. When you say Deep River, you mean Dead River, right? Yeah, Dead River. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I using the wrong name? Yeah. <laughs> yes. What is the <coughs> price protection fee? So you have to pay a fee in order for them to hold the price? Right. Yeah, and that's not refundable. 900 bucks. Yeah. That's just for one building, 900. That's for Town Hall. And then it's 700 for the fire station. It's clever. So, I th um, this is my opinion. Everybody else chime in. If we are going to um, go with a service, the one that has been providing service to us has been Nito for fuel oil and Osterman for gas. Um, they are not putting us under a time crunch to get this in, but obviously they want to to lock in some pricing as soon as they can. Uh, since we're doing business with them, and it is a volatile market, honestly, it's my opinion to stick with what we got. Uh, I, it may be a little bit less, you know, or a little bit more in a couple of places, but when you kick in those fees, you're, you're adding like another almost $2,000 to the... To the Osterman does the gas or does the oil? Uh, Nito, Guy Nito. Yeah. Do you want to try and? I always pronounce it Nito, but yeah. Do you want to, to try if he's coming to see the tanks? Do you want because we're not under a, a, a crunch to sign with them tonight? Do you want to go with it and see what he'll do it for? Sure. All right. So why don't we do that? Um, why don't we get back? Are we talking about for the propane? Because I did say that I would contact them tomorrow. Yeah, Nito. Because he knows the board meeting is tonight. Nito was going to come see the tanks. Tuesday. Tuesday. So let's hold off. And uh, um, the other two will just let expire. And we'll have to get a new one if we don't like what's on going on. On the oil. So you're saying that I'm going to call Nito back and tell him we're not taking this, that we're going to hold off? No, that? no, no. Let Nito come and review the gas. Okay. But, we, but sign on for the oil. Or no? Yeah. Let's get the information in first. Let's find out what the gas price is going to be added to it and uh, do it all at once rather than piecemeal. And if they say that that's not locked in, like the other two? We'll have to deal with what we have to deal with. Yeah. And we, we're better off having solid information than kind of... I kind of feel almost like we should just sign with NIDO when it comes to the oil and let them come look at the tank and then go from there. Okay. Because we've had good luck with them before and yep. we haven't had good luck with other people before okay. where we've gotten in a, a semi-snafu and... Okay. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a good idea. If that's so I'd make a motion to accept NIDO's proposal of 446 per gallon with no price program in place for fuel Actually, it's, it's 427. 420, I'm sorry. 427 for NIDO for the heating oil and the gas contingent on them coming and taking a look at the tanks and seeing what goes on from there. Okay, motion's on the table. Um, is there a second? Okay. Can Continue. I just add it? I'm, this would be similar to the current one, which is they will lock in for a certain number of gallons and if we go over that 
then we pay a higher rate, which yeah. is what happened last year. We locked in at a certain number of gallons. When the firehouse went over, they paid this higher rate of 446. Okay. Can we get a lock on the thermostats? <laughs> okay, so or do we need to provide like <laughs> slippers and gloves and mm -hmm. that is <laughs> So is there anything else? I was just going to ask about, so um, am I I'm holding off on Osterman and yeah. until let's, next Tuesday? Yeah. Let's get, let's get signed up with NIDO or NIDO and, uh, and well, wait, before I say that, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Five Okay. Now, <laughs> um, yeah, call, call NIDO, NIDO, whatever his name is and lock in the oil and then we'll hold off on the gas until after he looks at the tanks and we'll do that at a different day. So I'm going to be telling Austin that we're not taking their offer at this point. Um, I wouldn't say anything right no, now. No, I, yeah. I wouldn't say anything. But Just they're, ex they're expecting a call. Well, you can call them and tell them we're exploring yeah. or we're whatever. All right, so that, that whole production is taken care of. I will tell you that the uh, library signed with Coda and Coda um, over and above our agreement that uh, we would take care of capping the fuel costs. So we'll deal with that um, shortly, but there's no money in the budget to change those things. So there's no wiggle room. They'll have to cover whatever their allotment is on their own contract. Okay, now I have a request to sign a permit. And I didn't make copies because John Evans came in kind of while we were getting this set up. I'll pass this this way. And what they're proposing is to have those electronic speed signs in two places. One to slow the traffic down coming into the village on the hill and the other one on the other side of the, the central village on um, the map. The map shows the two places. Um, this is, we would talked at last meeting about uh, doing the um, reduction in speed from around Riverbend. We have the paperwork. We're going to uh, submit it um, just as soon as it's finished and see if Eric, uh, no, Mark, Mark. Eric's just wrote it. Mark Pickering uh, will uh, get the, the um, survey done that's necessary, and we can go from there. Okay, is there any, you entertain a motion to accept the request from the Planning Commission for the signs on Route 30? Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? Okay, the last question I have is, do you want me to sign it on behalf of all the board members? Sure. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? 5-0. So we'll get that out. All right, Steve. Um, go ahead with... You want to write the numbers on for me? Sure. So this, this is two separate grants. One grant is VTRANS Grants in Aid, which is sponsoring the project on Hall Drive. And the second is VTRANS Better Roads Program, which is doing five segments on Deer Ridge, Deer Valley, and Eastville. So I'll open the Hall Drive bids first. GPT Maintenance. $50,750. Second is A.S. Clark and Sons.
The third is Brennan Construction. They're out of Saxons River. Twenty-six thousand five hundred. And the last one is right maintenance. How do you spell that? <laughs> R O B. <laughs> $33,110. Okay, those are the four bids. All of these people did their site visits? And yes, all the, all the requirements? There was one other contractor on the site visits that did not submit a bid. The other four did. They were all there in do, attendance. Do we have a history of work with any of these? All of them. All of them. All right. Is Brennan, Matt Brennan? Okay. But his son does the construction part of it. All right. Is there a motion? They were all betting on the same thing because there's quite a range. Yep. I make a motion to accept Brennan's bid of $26,500 for Hall Drive project. Senator a second. Second. Okay, any, discuss, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I vote. All right, go ahead. Project number two. Bill Clark. $36,250. And where is this? So this is one segment on Deer Valley Road, three segments on East Hill Road at the Harmonyville end, and one segment on Deer Ridge Road. These would be all segments that are connected to a brook, perennial stream. Uh, A.S. Clark is next. $41,637. Forty one thousand six hundred thirty seven. $41,637. And right maintenance. $30,326. So same question. All of them did site visit? I did it on the, the same day. These are all pretty much the same people. They're all the same. Yep. Okay. Go ahead, Ron. I'd make a motion to accept <coughs> Brennan's bid at $27,900. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Okay. Made and seconded. Any discussion on these? Any one of them? Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Five votes. Okay. And the last thing we have is uh, a uh, executive session under personnel. Um, entertain a motion to go into the executive session to deal with the personnel matter. Moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Bye, Thank you.